Hi, my name is Hunter Vanier. I'm a graduate student here at Purdue in the Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Science. Hi, my name is James Haber. I'm also a graduate student, uh, fourth year studying uh, planetary science, also in the same department. And today, we are going to be talking about exoplanets and how to detect them. And so first off, we need to think about what an exoplanet is. And so an exoplanet is another planet that orbits a star that is not our own. So just as there are planets, including Earth, that orbit our host sun, out when you look in the sky, you see many stars, and those also have planets of their own that orbit them due to the gravity of those stars. And there's a diverse population of exoplanets out there, and because of the diversity, we are challenged to observe them in different ways. And even 20 years ago, we could count on our hands and toes the number of confirmed exoplanets discovered. And now we know there are thousands, making us think that exoplanets are not only a common thing in our galaxy, but that they really are ubiquitous. Almost around every star, there is likely going to be a planet. So there are billions more in our galaxy alone. The first way that we ever detected an exoplanet was not by looking directly at the planet, but by looking at the star that the planet is orbiting. Normally we think of gravity acting on the planets that are orbiting a star in a solar system. However, the planet's gravity is also acting on the star. So both the planet and the star are or orbiting the same center of mass together, as you can see in the animation. So we can see that the star is wobbling directly, but it's so far away that we can't really measure the amount that it's wobbling in order to detect the planet that's there. Instead, we take advantage of something that happens naturally, which is the Doppler effect. So energy, or which is sound, radio waves, light waves, heat, uh, these all move in waves. And like the waves you see in the animation, uh, they become longer or shorter depending on how fast the object is moving that's emitting them and whether it's moving towards you or away from you. You might have experienced this before if you ever hear an ambulance zoom past you on the road. It's sounds higher pitched when it's coming towards you and lower pitched when it's going away from you. The same thing happens with the light emitted from a star. As it's moving towards you, the waves become shorter and as it's moving away from you, it becomes longer or more red. And when it's moving towards you, they become more blue. Astronomers can look at this change in light to see that the star is wobbling and then figure out if an exoplanet is there and also how big and or how heavy the exoplanet actually is. Our second method we'll be discussing today is called the transit method. And so the transit method is when a planet um, is in between our telescopes and its host star. And as it passes in front of the star, it blocks some of that starlight, which we can detect. And so here, we are going to pretend that this flashlight is a distant star that we're looking at, and this foam ball is one of its planets. And so you can see now the light is not blocked by the planet at all, but as it orbits its host star, comes in front, and you can see that some of that light is blocked from our perspective. And then as it orbits the star again, we can see how long it takes for that planet to uh, pass in front of the host star, and then we can de determine how quickly it's, it's um, orbiting that star. Um, but some considerations when uh, detecting exoplanets with this method is how our angle is compared to that star. So if we're looking at a distant star and the planet is orbiting it in this direction, then we won't be able to detect it. Another uh, difficulty with this method is that if the planet is really small, it won't block as much of that host star's light. The final method that we use to study exoplanets uh, that we'll be talking about today is called direct imaging. Sometimes the simplest way to look for an exoplanet is just to look directly at it. However, oftentimes, as you saw here, the, the star it's orbiting is so bright that it can just drown out all the reflected light that's coming from the exoplanet, if it's very small or if it's orbiting in a different way. Now, one thing that astronomers have come up with in order to uh, better detect these 
planets that are orbiting these stars is by using an instrument called a coronagraph. A coronagraph is a little uh, shield that's inside a telescope that can move in front of the star and allow you to uh, look at the exoplanet more clearly. Imagine trying to look at an airplane that's close to the sun on a sunny day. Uh, you might not be able to see it while looking directly at it, because you'll be blinded by the sun, don't try this at home, but if you use uh, your thumb or another object to block out the sun's light, you'll probably be able to see it much more clearly. And in the future, uh, scientists and astronomers will even be putting up these uh, huge instruments called star shades in front of space telescopes that will unfold and block out the light from the stars before they even hit this telescope so that it can image exoplanets directly and even image things like continents and oceans. This is the future of exoplanet astronomy. And NASA has discovered over 4,000 exoplanets so far, so get out there and try and detect some more with these methods and others. Thank you. Thanks.